Hello, this is Victor here with a new painting tutorial, the second part on the Blight Bringer painting tutorial. So, uh, in this part, we are going to start doing the base colors uh, on the actual miniature. And if you want the first part, I just did the base, and here you have what was the final result. So, this is how the base is looking like. So, we go now for the second part where I'm going to uh, start doing the base colors and I will try to. Uh, yeah, let's start doing the first effects. So first I will uh, paint the armor plates and I will use Death Forest Wild to do that. We are going to apply it with different arm, uh, armor plates, uh, leaving the rims if uh, possible without painting. So I just focus on the, on, on the armor plate itself, okay, right? So Okay, for example here, and as you can see, I don't have the miniature glue yet because I want to have easy access to the legs, and I don't have the backpack glued neither. Okay, so we are. Um, I want to keep them separate so I can I can paint them easier. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to paint uh, the armor plates, and once this is done. I will be back. So I have done the armor plates and now I'm going to use uh, Rathasar Gold to do the metal parts and the bell and so on. So I will start with the bottom as I did before. I will do the rim. Okay, we are going to do also these small bells. Okay, and I will do the hook. No, the hook I will do it in one color. Okay, we do this. We are going to use the same color for the big bell. This can get from the back. We can do the same. I will not do the We will paint the bell, the bell completely and then we will, we will do the symbol on top. So to do that I will take a bigger brush. We can take a bigger brush and we paint the bell. So we are, I'm going to do all the metal parts with this color and I'm back. That is done. Okay, uh, we have done now all the cooperage colors. You can see on the both parts, okay, on the backpacks. Now I'm going to um, paint this part that are the joints of the armor and I will use uh, Gother Brown for that. Okay, so this is the color, both are brown. We are going to apply this on the on this type of joints. Okay, like that. I think in this case we only have really two joints that are visible. 
because on the arm yeah on the arm we can apply it but I think I will not do on the arm you can do it it's going to be difficult like here I miss some of the trimming so I will do this later on so I think at this moment I will just apply it here and then if you if I miss any join I will do it later on okay this moment what I want to do is to lock all the main colors okay and later on we are going to work on the details and once we go on the details sometimes we find that we miss some parts okay let's do now all this skin that he has around I have seen that and what should use almost a pinkish skin uh, I'm in my case I prefer to go well, we can make as well a pinkish one but I will start much I think I will use yeah uh, as well a pink color and then we are going to is to have some contrast. So I'm going to use Bogman's glue on all this flesh that is around. Okay, like this one here. Okay. I'm going to use this mix maybe later on with green. You want to give it at the end the sensation of sick, right? We are going to use it here. We are going to use it here on this type of tentacles and stuff. And I was trying to, I was thinking to use a pale green, but then you don't have too much contrast with the armor, right? So in that case, that I have this green, this flesh color will have a very interesting contrast with the rest of the armor. This way, I decide to go for a, a more pinkish flesh at the end. I was hesitating about that, but I think with the right shading and highlights will give the sensation of sick, okay? So I'm going to apply this here, here. I will not do the, I was thinking also to do the tubes with this flesh color. I think for the tubes we will use a different one. Okay, so we are going to apply it as well on the other feet, I think. I need to check if the here is more this type of horns. Okay, so we do it like that. Okay, and we can go on the front. All these mirrors have quite so much detail sometimes it's difficult to know what are you looking at so for example this thing here this looks like flesh popping out of the armor joint something like that or tentacle So it seems that the flesh is swelling inside the armor and escaping from the joint. Okay. So I will I will do all the rest of the flesh with the max glue and I come back. Okay, at the end I decided to glue this guy to the base and now I'm going to use Bane Blade Brown to do the cloth that he's having at the front. Okay, I like to use, as I can see, I, I don't like to use purples or bright colors on these guys. I only use them when I have to do some post tools or flesh. But for the clothes, the armor, and all these type of th things, I like to go with uh, quite a mute color scheme. So we are going to apply two layers. You can see Bainblade Brown have some problems to cover over black. 
So I'm going to apply two layers of paint light brown here to have a uniform uh, cover uh, of the of, on the clothes, and I'm back. So this is how it looks like after doing two layers of paint light brown. Brown, sorry. Now I'm going to use um, uh, Valor Brown to do the tubing, to do all the uh, tubes and the sleeve of the tubes. Uh, the, the sleeve is broken in some places, so we try not to go on the parts that is metal because then it's easier for me to see where I need to apply the metal. Okay. So, for example, here on on this tube that is at the neck part, we are going to do something like that. And I leave the whole untouched. Then I do okay. Then this another broken part there. So this the the sleeve of this type of cables or wires are really damage exposing the tube inside right or the, the metal inside I mean so I'm going to do this one for example here I'm going for the smaller brush it's going to have better control okay I do it like that now I will do this part Okay, and now we are going to apply it here. I do here. And we go. Okay. Sorry that I'm sometimes I speak too low too low to yeah too low. But it's because I'm focused on on painting and yeah. Also taking especially when you do the tails. Sometimes it's difficult to talk and paint at the same time. Okay, you can see I will do the rest of the corrugated tube or oh, oh, of oh, not the I mean the sleeves. They are another one here and then there is the ones in the backpack so I will do them all with this color and I will be back once I have done them okay we have done now all the tubes uh, on the miniature and next I'm going to do this type of horns and to do that uh, I will uh, paint first uh, them with a uh, raised uh, bone okay I'm going to use a contrast there and I'm going to use first raised bone uh, as a base for the uh, uh, for the contrast, okay, because uh, it have a very nice texture, and we can benefit of this texture uh, using a contrast paint. Okay, so I will apply this on the different horns or protrusions he has, and I will give this uh, like a almost a wood looking something like that. Okay, so I apply I do that uh, and. And I come once it's done. So I have done as well the horn that comes in the in the backpack, and now I'm going to do the metal, okay, the chains and other metallic parts, and I'm going to use iron breaker. This one we are going to do the chains. I'm going to do as well the pistol. I will make the pistol in raw metal, okay? Uh, I will make it look old and I will enf uh, enhance the old looking plane with metallics, okay? So I will apply this on the gun.
then I'm going to do the change as well. Okay, I will do the change like that. Okay. So I will try to leave, as you can see, try to leave the middle of the chain. something like that and then we do the side and we do the same so I touch like that like that and then I go to the other side I touch this this and I go and you keep turning and doing the different sides okay so I will do the pistol the chains any and also the handle of this bell With that, I'm going to have all the main uh, colors applied, and we are going to do as well. Remember that we have left the part of the wire that is inside in black, so we are going to apply it as well here the metal, the iron breaker. Okay. So I will do all this and I come back once this is done. Okay, next step, I'm going to apply a, a snake bite. No snake bite later, sorry. I was getting the wrong paint. Uh, a skeleton uh, hold on the horns, okay? So we are going to apply this like that. Okay, uh, we try to avoid this point, so I will sp now spread this as much as I can. I don't want this. This way you can see that it weights very nice. Shading. Okay. It's too much. Okay, so I apply this on the holes. And we wait the this device. So here we have the middle with all the base colors applied. And the and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ap apply a wash on it. So I'm going to apply uh, Aguax Air Shade. Uh, I will apply it all over the miniature Aguax Air Shade, all the skin, everything will be covered with it. Will give a nice shading. And this will give the really base to know to start doing the fancy work later on, okay? So try to avoid that it's pulling too much. On Norgo, maybe pulling is not that critical. You can keep some dark parts, but uh, yeah, be, be careful how you apply the, the, the wash, okay? But you want to make it quite even coverage. I will try to avoid to go on top of the uh, horns okay or this type of bone protrusions I will try to avoid that I want to keep them lighter so the only part that will not be covered with Aguax air shade are going to be just this type of horns I will do the main body okay I will let it dry then I will glue the backpack and I will do the backpack once it's glue because if not it's a pain to hold I'm, I'm thinking because the other option is to hold the backpack, yeah, the backpack you see. This is, we can hold it by the horn and then do in two steps. But I think I prefer to glue it and do the backpack in one go. Okay, so I will do that. Uh, I will do the backpack, and I come. I will come back once the wash have dry. But here there is not much material. You can see. Uh, I can do maybe all this at the camera. It's quite a fast. Uh, thing to do apply the wash you want to go fast you want to spread well the paint all over the miniature and you want to avoid uh, too much accumulation in one point that is pulling right uh, important to go on the metal to make the metal look dirty look old okay you can see i also went on top of the cloth we can do another one the cloth and the cloth is a point 
you can you can be a little more careful you don't want it to pull too much because if not you will have like the strange stains but I know this guy will not go clean but you want to control where to add put the stains okay so you can see this is quite a straightforward step okay so I will do as I said I finish this I, I, I have finished to apply the wash and I come back once it's dry okay the only thing that I'm missing now to do part of the glowing of the plasma is the Norgling so we are going to apply first a, co a skin color on the Norgling and I'm going to use a, a, um, iron rag skin okay I know that this is a internet color but why not use it on him okay it's a very pale green and I think it's a nice base um, for also for Norgal skin so I'm going to apply this I, um, all over the skin I don't take care if there is I, I don't care if there are uh, pustules or any other detail because we are going to pop up we are going to do the detail later on I just want now to apply a base uh, where to work on okay so I do that I apply this uh, I let it dry and I'm back. Okay, next step I'm going to use a uh, this one, the camo shade. Okay, a green wash, a military green wash to put it on top of the to, to put it on the uh, nurling, okay? want to give some shading this will help to see to see all the details from there we will be able to work I want to keep him pale contrasting uh, with the dark uh, darker colors of the of the armor of the blight bringer so in that way we can have him more yeah have him different right so you always want to play a little bit with the greens we can later on put a little bit of pinkish or flesh colors especially in the pustules or somewhere to give this <coughs> to change a little bit the tonality okay and while this is drying I think that we can start working on doing the weathering on the armor plate of the yeah we can do the what I will do first before doing the weathering I will start doing some edge highlight on the armor I want to pop up the different armor plates and I will use this is too light I will use Striking green. I'm thinking maybe it's better to use Lauren Forest. <coughs> I don't know Forest is too into my shapes. I will use striking green. And we are going to do some edge highlight on the armor okay so what we want to do let me find a place where it's easy to show we are going to do we want to start from here this is the easiest place to start we are going to start Edge highlight the border of the armor. Okay, you have to be careful not to touch, but you can get the idea.
Okay. So I'm going to do edge highlight on the different armor plates. And I will show you once it's done. We are going also to dodge the different rivets. Okay, especially here you want to do this. And I will do a little bit around these holes. Okay, so I will keep doing that and I come back once it is done. Next step, I'm going to use razor rust and we are going to do the... I'm going to, to put this in the holes that he has all around the armor. So I thin it down a little bit and I just put it there. Okay, I want to give this the orange will give very interesting contrast with the green. And will help to show this oxidation. That we expect. And then I'm going to use the same to do some whoops we need to be careful with okay so I'm going to use the same and I'm going to put it a little bit just next to the rivets and drip it down You don't need only to put it on the holes, you try to do the weathering on different parts, but I will do it as well because I will do the holes. Okay, for example, here I'm going to play, lose it, I'm going to put it as well on this part. the back so the backpack is curious it does not have too much like holes or over markings like that but then we can I can do something like that right It's a little difficult to work with this because it's more dry than a wash. You take water. We just put here and there a little bit of rust and we do as well the holes here in the back. Okay, and we keep working. Let me do the face.
take it as an off and then do the, this part here okay I know you will keep doing this all over the miniature so I will keep doing that and I come back once Next step, I'm going to use Securex bronze and I will do the very brushing and highlight with that, okay? So on the bell, I will take a little bit, maybe, yes, no. It's quite a strange texture, this paint. But we take a bronze. No, okay, and we there brush a little bit the bell. Same on these parts. Try not and on the incense bearers. Of course, we do this. Well. as well Spikes on the helmet. Now we take a smaller brush. But not one that is in very good shape. So we do this. And we'll try to touch a little bit the bell, the, the flies, sorry.
and now I will use nickelid oxide and I will add as well on the we are going to apply the nickelid oxide on the bronze or copper parts okay, so this will be the bell we are going to do the again the holes We are going to put as well in some of these processes or joints within parts. I will try to go with less. That and you put in different random parts. Okay, so let's put for example here. We can do it out. to do this completely with this color to show the symbol of Norgal and now my finger I do like that apply here Put it, I would like to these things put on the holes and not on the flies. Right. for the armor we do all the different holes and then we apply needed some additional in the joints or something like that okay this bell is really in poor shape So we'll keep doing that. This knee I also want to put in the holes. In the holes, sorry, I mean. Okay. I will do one in sensor, for example. We don't need to put too much on the sensor. We see that it's too much, take water. I remove a little bit. Okay, 
so I will keep doing that on the different parts so it's not done completely so we can put here around this one around the spikes for example we can put a little bit more okay and here the way since that this was not applied correctly so I will apply the wash later on again. Okay, I will be doing that on all the bronze parts and I'm back. Okay, we have done all the um, nickel oxide on the brass parts okay and this will look like that at this moment okay so it looks not quite nice but you see that the nuggling is something that we need to work on so I'm going to work now on the nuggling so on the in the eye I will use uh, blood angels red the contour spin shake it glossiness the wash but it's not a problem on an nuggling so now I'm going to use a purplish color a mouse purple another contrast paint on the pustules and it's just to have a contrasting color there okay And I will not go I'm using the contrast paint because they are a little bit transparent. They, they are quite they are quite transparent, and this will give me just a shading at this moment. That is what I'm looking for. Okay, put it there. And if, oops, if you leave a little bit of uh, purple around, it's not a problem because this will give the sensation that this that the skin is rotted. Rotted I mean it's It's unhealthy. Right, this purple color will give unhealthy connotations. Okay, and I like to use the contrast because of that. Because you see, it's quite transparent, and they are not too strong. Okay, next I will on the whole. I will apply uh, a skeleton hold as we did on the horns of the Blightbringer itself. Device. So while the color we applied on the nuggling is drying, we can work on other parts. So let's work a little. 
little bit on the flesh part because they are very very flat so what I'm going to do now I'm going to take Cadian flesh stone no, I will take one for scale 75 I will take this one pink flesh we are going to do some highlights so you want a pinkish skin And what we do is we highlight the different skin parts. This will help to increase. If you think that the skin, the contrast is too high, we can take a little bit of Bookman's Glow to help us on reducing this contrast. Even a mix 50 50 of Bookman Glow with the pink skin from scale 75. The other option is to use a mixture of Cadia Flesh Stone with a Bookman Glow, and you will have more or less the same. I will hit as well the boost tools grains with this pink flesh. not to forget any of the different tentacles and different fleshy things that he has all along. Okay, you can see what I do is I apply first the pink flesh and then I use Bookman Glow to reduce 
to make the transition softer. Yeah, not well to collect if there is any mistake from previous layers. Now we will wait that the flesh dries, and while it's drying, we can work a little bit. We can work on oh, a little bit. We can work on the cloth, right? I'm going to use now again Bainley Brown. We are going to highlight the this cloth that he has. Remember, base color was as well brindle brown, but was washed with aqua air shade. That's why we, the color is darker now. Now, what we want to do is just to make these highlights a little bit more visible. Now we can do an additional highlight on the cloth with a um, lacquer flesh. With the same racker flesh, what I will do, there are some small worms or larvas around this guy. So we are going to make them with this almost brown of white. Oops. 
often. Transition, so it's a matter, um, a matter, as a matter of compensating the highlights and an intermediate color in between. Something like that is enough. Take again, when we blow, and I try to help. Well, we can do this one here with darker flesh. It's too thick. I come with main blade brown. And I thin it. Okay. So, one thing I want to work is I want to add a little bit of additional highlight at the face and the armor mask okay, or the yellow so I will take a lighter green this is this is a green camo just to make it more visible and then I will light around these markings here and I will take the streaking streaker green was the color we used fairly for the highlights we are going to play a little bit more and I smooth all these transitions. The reason to make this really lighter is to Pop up a little bit more the face, right? We can do, I will change color now. I will go back to the Valor Brown. And he has some small tubes that I miss when I was doing the rest of the tubes. So I will do them now, but at this next to the side and now we do a little bit of this we apply a little bit here because now this remember we as well wash this 
chlorated tubes, or not chlorated, this is leaves of the tubes with um, LCH so we can apply a little bit of this valor here, um, brown to add a little bit of highlight okay, and also to clean up if it's needed it's going to be very so the least headline, but this is what I'm, I'm, what I'm looking for. Okay, you can see now the places where we have played purple in the novel, how visible it is now. And here we come, we can come a small dilemma. What to do with the novel? I think I will apply a second wash and now we will apply Brigland Flay Shade to give it a pinkish tonality or reddish tonality on the skin so we are going to apply this on the whole skin this will increase even more the shading but also will give a nice pinkish tone on the skin that will help to look it I think from my point of view grosser and more interesting tone okay, you can use the same tone on the skin of the uh, if, if this is of the that watch if you want, so the skin that we have pop out can be also done like that but I prefer to do the skin of the navling different than the skin of the bright bringer so we apply that and now yes we will need to wait this device before doing any further step because I just want to work on this on the navling and finish the work I hope this kills a little bit the shiny because for me it was too shiny. To play this as well on the horn. And all these layers of paints will give a nice touch. And with this one, we also do the, this type of worms or larvas that he has a wrong. I think there is another one I, mean, I cannot find now, so I will do it later. At this one point, that, yeah, this thing here, but I think I will leave it like that. Okay, now I will wait that this device, and I will be back for the, uh, for the next steps. Okay, now the wash that we have applied half dry. I will do anyway first the glow on the on the plasma. Okay, so I will use I will do a green glow. I will start with mood green. you will avoid to have black something like that something like that 
And here I forgot a little bit of the cover part. So I will do the cover later on. Okay, we do that. Now I will take Warstone Glow and we are going to apply this a roll. As you can see, I go a little bit on top of the metal. something like that. Here I will go as well a little bit below the metal. Now we will take yellow, flash is yellow we can use try to use a yellow that is not very warm and we are going to apply this in the middle okay, and now I come with the green with the mode green, I go over and see we have. I'm going to go back with yellow. The intention is to make the middle of this gun quite bright. And then let it lose brightness and we go to the borders okay now I will take mood green Sorry. Now I will do just 
Okay. So we we'll leave this like that. We can finish the work by painting now. Finish to paint the nail. So now we are going to clean up a little bit the darling skin I will use the paint we had just before that was a ear rack skin we are going to apply this as highlights of the different parts of the skin right we are going to do something like that just to make the skin look more pale. So we we'll do something like that. And we can use the same color as this almost white to do the teeth. So you can see now that the brights have disappeared with this second wash. Covering more and more poor tools he has. And the scars. So but the, the point here is to pop up all the different skin details and musculature. All the different parts, as you can see. I know that this color is quite contrasting, but the meter is quite small. And as I said, I'm looking more for a 
something that is going to be efficient and look nice on the tabletop. We can work to make these skins, this transition softer. By doing blendings. always find miniatures. I like that they put narlins on top of the characters. So to differentiate even more the pustules, I will apply second time the purple color. Okay. We'll apply for a second time the Magus purple. I want them to pop up a little bit more. And I will just do like that. Okay, so we keep popping down all of them. Almost done. And just to finalize the work, one thing that I would like to do is to put an orange dot on the eye. Okay, to make it look yeah, something like that, so in that case the eye is looks more bright and life. And this will be how I will do the painting job on the on this light bringer. So here you have the final result. Okay, here you have as you can see the front, back. So, and yeah, that's all the work. So, I hope you have found this tutorial interesting. Please let me know what do you think. Give a like if you have liked this video. And keep tuned. And remember, at the beginning of every month, normally give the option to vote uh, dif uh, between different options for the next tutorial. So, if you are interested in something, just leave it in the comments below or keep tuned and you will see what are going to be the next tutorials. So yeah, as I said, that's all for now. As usual, thanks a lot for watching and see you again later. Bye!